hey, what are you guys doing there? You must be after the Dangerous Beasts review. Is that what it's called, Denny? Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Oh, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Down below. Come with me. Hey, and welcome to the Dan and Mitch Show. He's Dan. And he's Mitch. And today we're on... Uh, Fantastic Beasts. Fantastic Beasts and where they're found. To find them. I can't even remember the title. Fantastic Dan. Beasts and where to find them. Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Which is obviously set in the Wizarding World. And it's set 70 years before the Harry Potter stories took place. That's very interesting. Isn't it? Sort of. Mm. For, for a, a, a great big old Potter fan like myself. Have you ever seen a Potter film? Spoiler alert, I have not. This not was the first Harry Potter film that I saw that wasn't even Harry Potter. Or Harry Potter, In yes. fact, I have Dan Meister here to thank for uh, taking me to this film. That's true. In fact, I would like to bring out the trophy <laughs> and award this to myself for actually seeing a movie. So, thank you, thank you. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. No. I would never have guessed. You can see I've got my Harry Potter collection here. I can see your books. Um, I'm a massive fan. So going into this film, I had high expectations. Mm. I had high hopes. And I really wanted a film to deliver on the promise of the, the wizarding world. <laughs> the promise, okay. Now, So what did you get, Danny? You went in there expecting a good old wizard romp. And, and what did you personally get? I got a film which was good, but not, not great. When it was working, it was working really well. Mm. Um, but So how do we fix it? <sighs> Get your hats on, boffins. We're going to fix this movie. How are we going to fix it? With a spell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. No. You've never read the books? Never read the books. You've never read a book? I've never read a book. Yeah. I've never seen the... F yeah. Never so seen what did you expect? Bef bef just going in, what did you expect? To be honest, I have no idea. I just... I wanted to see what was in the suitcase. And did you see what was in the suitcase? I did. Was it good? It, I think it was. Okay. I was I was mildly happy with it. Yes. But, but overall, <laughs> overall, how what would you, how would you talk about? Well, overall, the the innards of the suitcase could have been improved on a couple of levels. Um, the ecosystems and the biomes uh, could have been tweaked. Um, I thought they were quite... for balancing, and um, I don't know. I think the the snow could have been maintained a little better. Let's talk about the things I liked first. All right, let's talk okay. about what Danny likes. What I re I really liked the cast of characters. Yeah, it was very good casting. Right. I like the main guy. Yep. He was a snivelly little... Eddie Redmayne? Weirdo, wasn't he? Yeah. Little British uh, yeah. zoologist type. He was, he was awkward, but I liked yeah. him. Yeah, uh, he looked the part. Yeah, he looked he's awkward. Like he looked like this like weird school. British kid yeah. who shouldn't be in America, and I think he did that really well. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd also say uh, Dan Fogel, who played the Nomad, the non-magic guy, the guy with the beard. And the, the muggle. The muggle. The muggle. Yeah. Oh, look at you go. I'm learning. Ding, ding. Um, I thought he was fantastic. Okay. He, I think he added a lot to the film. I really, really enjoyed his. Oh, Cogsworth! Too. You're talking about Cogsworth. Oh, ten years we've been rusting, needing so much more than dusting. The big, I think, I feel like the big problem in this film is probably the story. <gasps> Danny doesn't like it. There were two really solid stories. <laughs> okay. There was kind of this, um, th this main story of, um, I guess these these fantastic beasts escaping and you mm. trying to catch them. Yeah. That was one whole story, right? And there was this other story, which is kind of a bit spoilery, which I don't want to like necessarily describe, but there was this whole other story that was kind of weaving through the... The, the Harry Potter the back story yeah, you're um, talking about? Well, I mean, I wouldn't even say that per se. Because it's, there was a part of the film... Well, I, that, I don't know. So most, well, most of the film, for me, felt like it, it demanded me to know at least something about Harry Potter. And that I part, felt I was missing yeah, out on something. I understand why you're calling that the Harry Potter part of the story. The and Potter part. I kind of agree. That part felt like it was just holding down what could have been this fun, light, easy to watch, mm. funny, enjoyable film. Yeah. They're blocking it down with things that um, people who have even enjoyed the Harry Potter films yeah. were scratching their, their heads over going, what's this? Yeah. I don't see the connection. You kind of had like the film being dragged in two directions. There were two. There it? were two main stories. You had the the really. I didn't like, know what it was going to be. The scary, like serious wizard, wizardy stuff. Wizardy stuff. And then you had the wimpy animal conservation stuff. And I, to me, I, I, I would have felt <laughs> it was just if they went day. either way, it would have worked. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't go either way. They went both ways. So would you, you would you focus on saving the animals? Yeah, I think that would have been a, a, a better film. What about the rainforests, Danny? You got to save them first. Well. That's a whole other issue. 
there were some good set pieces in the film. Oh, it looked great. And to me, the whole experience of the film, the maybe the direction was really on point. Mm. Whenever you'd go to these different locations and they were more fantastic than the last, yeah. there were more weird stuff. You're talking about Inside the Suitcase, aren't you, Danny? Maybe. Well, that's not really a that's spoiler. spoiler. That, that's, in that's in the trailer. It's in the trailer. Yeah, Inside the that. Suitcase. Okay, well, you're right. We can talk about that. Inside the Suitcase yeah. was probably my favourite part of the movie. I know. that. That's actually oh. why I said I would come with you because yeah. I remembered seeing it in the trailer and I thought, I wonder what's in there. But it delivered. It, I didn't feel like it was going to deliver. I'm like, well, mm. what can they really do? But I felt like that whole part really delivered. And mm. even those uh, inside um, parts when they're inside these weird magical places and there were things hovering and moving and... People were getting their uh, wands, the wands waxed and buffed. Oh, like wait, no, that's a different People place. would get their shoes buffed. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. The, that, um, the, the, the equivalent of the Men in Black headquarters yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah. That stuff was great. I really liked yeah, that, that stuff. Um, well, who were those people? The, the ones with the, the weird um, noses? Those little el- elvish bastards. Who were they? Oh. Tell me, Denny. Oh, is that a spoiler? Is it's that a spoiler? It's not a spoiler at all. It's not? It's, I, uh, goblins. Goblin. Goblins. Goblins. What's their deal? How good was Ron Perlman? I don't know if you noticed. Ron, Ron, was he in it? Yeah. He was, who? He was one of the goblins. He was the the, the hard-talking goblin. <gasps> with the fingers. That was him. That was him, with yeah. With the fingers? He was very well-groomed for Ron Did Perlman. Did you see the fingers, Mitchell? Okay, Denny. So, let's wrap this up. Final thoughts? Final thoughts. Would you see it again? <sighs> uh, maybe on Blu-ray. Really? You would? Maybe okay. on Netflix. All right. In that kind of capacity. You see it for free? Um, I, I, I'd, I'd see it in preparation for the next film, which will be really good. Would you see it out of your mind's eye? I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, I, I, I mean, all in all, <laughs> I'd give the film a solid three and a half out of five. Three and a half Dannys. Um, I, I think, I mean, which is to Interesting, because I, I thought about this um, as soon as we left the cinema. Mm. I thought solid... Three Dannys. Yeah, that's what I thought. Really? And I thought he, I thought he loved this film. I thought we were going to have a little quarrel today oh, about sorry to me giving it a low score and then you giving it like five out of five Dannys. Mitchell, you're as disappointed as I was. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I want to be. I, no, this can't be happening. We can't be agreeing on something. Oh. I think I'm going to give it five Dannys. There you go. Oh, it's the best film in the universe. There, there, right there. Five Dannys. You see that, Danny? Yes, yeah, I see, see that. Yeah, you do. Love it. This guy. How interesting. This guy. This guy. You believe this guy? Give, given the best film of all time, Three and a Half Dennys, you're dreaming, pal. He's dreaming. You know, I've got a funny thing I can do with this wand. No, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's special effects, guys. It wasn't real. <laughs> Mitch out. See you next time. <laughs> special effects. That's terrible. <laughs> Oh, if, if you're still watching this, we you do have a magic. video coming. Was it? You wrecked the magic. I did, I did. Um, if you'd like to hear us talk about our um, uh, spoiler version of mm-hmm. the film, maybe stay along for the the, the next... Uh, or click here. I, 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 maybe actually, there's a thing. Just yeah, there's probably thing. some sort of graphic that you can With click on. Thing. After this video, you can...